Hi, I'm Steve. You can call me Steve. Last time I talked about how creationists claim that an eye is too complex to have evolved naturally, and then showed the process of a simple light-sensing organ evolving naturally into a more complicated structure. We left off with a Nautilus's pinhole eyeball. This was the big step in this process, going from something that could just sense light to something that could see an image. Everything after this point will be stepwise improvements in the quality of the image. Having a hole in your face meant schmutz and parasites could get in there. It's really hard to see out of an eye that's full of pus and wriggling things. The next step was to put a transparent covering over the pinhole to seal it up and keep bad things out. This is the origin of the cornea. Once you've sealed off the cavity, you can fill it with a fluid or some goo, which helps filter out UV radiation and helps you see in or out of water. The cornea and the goo also help with focusing, so you can see sharper images and distinguish smaller objects. However, you're still limited by the fact that your light is coming through a tiny pinhole of fixed size. If you put a focusing lens behind the pinhole, you can concentrate more light onto a smaller area. This sharpens the image more and lets you see more detail. Now we're really getting close to something that looks like a modern camera. We've almost reached the eyeball that's in your head right now. We have a self-contained cavity lined with photoreceptors at the back and filled with goo. There's a lens behind the pupil and a covering film. All that's missing is for the covering film to have its own little bubble of fluid to make a proper cornea and some sort of mechanism to control the amount of light that enters the eye. That extra fluid bubble, our cornea, maximizes the resolution of the images you see and a control mechanism, or the iris, means you can easily adjust to changes in light levels and don't get blinded if you go into or out of a darkened room. I covered all of this in more detail when I talked about how eyes actually work. Each one of those steps was an improvement on the previous one. They weren't sudden steps either. Each version of the eye I described was a snapshot along a gradual process. The lens didn't suddenly appear. It grew in over many generations, and probably started out as just a coating of skin on the inside of the eye that got thicker and thicker. If you take that lens away, you don't get a non-functioning eye. You get a functioning, less advanced eye. The eye in your head, the one that mimics an actual camera, isn't the only solution evolution has come up with in order to see with light. A compound eye, like the ones found in insects and other creepy crawlies, uses thousands of low-resolution lenses to build a cluster that can only detect light movement, but sees in a much wider angle than our two high-resolution cameras. If you've ever tried to swat a fly, only to watch it buzz off long before your hand gets anywhere near it, you know how effective this type of eye is. That's the history of the eyeball. It's difficult to know how long the process took the first time because a lot of the early organisms with eyes didn't fossilize well. As far as we can tell, eyes first appeared in multicellular life about 540 million years ago, which is when multicellular life itself appeared. And the eyes quickly became quite complex. Mathematical models have estimated the process could have gone from start to finish in only a few hundred thousand years, which is blisteringly fast for evolution. Nevertheless, we know it did happen, because we can see examples of the intervening structures today in all sorts of animals. Thanks for watching. I've been Steve.